Rudy Giuliani. Should we start with this Giuliani uh, on on Fox News or, or the one on Ingram before we get to the Bill Barr thing? Probably the Ingram one. Okay. So here's Rudy Giuliani. Now, look, there's a lot of cross currents here that I don't think we fully understand yet. Senate Republicans are not exactly closing ranks around uh, Donald Trump at this point. They voted 100 to 1, well, uh, 50, you know, uh, the majority, uh, of course, are Republicans, to have the whistleblower report come out. They can't control it, but it's a resolution. But I think it's quite possible that they're like, okay, this is going to happen. We don't want to be on the wrong side of trying to, to hide this. It's not inconceivable. I would say there's probably like a 1.5% chance or 2% chance that the Republicans decide like, oh, this is just too toxic. We've got to throw, now's the time to throw Trump over. We could do this now. We get Pence in there. And uh, then, you know, everything changes. I would say there's a one, one to 2% chance of that happening. No, because there's no hundred percent with anything as uh, Rudy Giuliani has taught us. Um, but more than likely, um, they're waiting just to figure out what we're supposed to say and to hear from their, uh, their, their base, which they will within a day or two after, uh, Mark Levin and, and Rush Limbaugh and, uh, tell them what to do. They will hear from them and they will, they will stand by their president. But there's also some exposure for people like Mike Pompeo in the State Department. There's also some exposure from Mick Mulvaney because they have been named in all of this. And so Rudy Giuliani, it seems, is basically trying to argue that... Um, he he was just a play. He he had nothing to do with this except for the fact that the State Department wanted him to contact or to be to receive a contact from Ukraine. Which, if that doesn't make any sense to you, it shouldn't. <laughs> Here is Giuliani explaining this all to Laura Ingram, and it's um, it's a uh, s so if you will himself into the process, uh, insiders saying, you muck this up, your response. Man, I really did. And you know who I did it at the request of? The State Department. I never talked to a Ukrainian official until the State Department called me and asked me to do it. And then I reported every conversation back to them. And uh, Pause it for a second. I mean, doesn't it beg the question, why is a guy who thinks it's so funny that the State Department would ask him to take a call from Ukraine, why does he get asked by the State Department to take a call from Ukraine? Like, I mean, it's literally as if they, like the State Department called me and said, Sam, you know nothing about the Ukraine. Will you take a call from their number two or three uh, top official and just let us know what he says? Like, like there's something missing or, in this or, equation, or it's right? like, I mean... The thing that could not be missing is also super questionable. Like, hey, Rudy, you had a private security consulting firm that did work across the globe, including for some incredibly corrupt governments with some extremely questionable policy recommendations. We have something incredibly shady we'd like you to look a, into. Or it could be, Mike, have Rudy do it. But I'm not going to tell him to do it. You tell him to do it. <laughs> Here we are. Conversation back to them. And uh, Laura, I'm a pretty good lawyer, just a country lawyer. But it's all here, right here. Uh, the, the first call from the State Department, the debriefing of the State so Department. So why are they why are they out to the, get you? The, this this the, story the, the, is filled because, with unnamed because, sources uh, again. I, I will compliment myself because I do a pretty good job for him. And they try to destroy everybody around him. But they're not going to intimidate me. In fact, I'm going to work harder. Because I don't get intimidated by bullies. I don't get intimidated. I have a chapter in my book about standing up to bullies. Oh, but I, I wrote about it. I never realized the depth of the corruption. My ghostwriter even wrote Joe about Biden it. Joe Biden was intellectually challenged, but a nice guy. I never knew the depth of this corruption. It's massive. It's shocking. And if I played a role in getting that out, I did a service to my country, and I'm proud of it. And everything I did is defensible, and everything I did is legal, and most of what they're doing is to cover up for a crime. 
Pause it. Now, who is there? Like, is he saying that Joe Biden is in league with the State Department? Because it's the State Department that's putting out a notice saying that that anonymous source is saying that he mucked this up in some way. Why didn't he say he was just a boy from Brooklyn with a law degree? Like, that would make sense. Humble, I'm a country lawyer. Yeah. That guy's never lived out of New York City in his life, as far as I know. I don't. I don't think so. Uh, But he's a country lawyer. You know what that means. I, I literally don't. He should I have said, no I'm just idea like a boy from the outer boroughs I'm or just something. Like, I'm like Atticus Finch. <laughs> and I'm happy to have him challenge me because every time they've challenged me, they go down and we win because they are acting improperly. Yeah. They are acting with an abuse of power. And the president of the United States conversation with that president, if you consider what a crook Joe Biden and his son were, was demanded, it was necessary, you cannot let... The vice president of the United States allow his son to enrich himself to the tune of millions and why, millions but, of but dollars. Rudy, Rudy, and not I couldn't agree with you more. And but not, why are you the one to do this? Why isn't this the role of the Justice Department or the FBI? Why task you, the personal attorney, the president to do that? I think that's, that's a question that just layman was like, okay, I get it. I, that should be investigated. But why is Rudy role, you know, running the show on that? Why isn't it? FBI and just domain justice. That's a very good question. That is a good question. Uh, because the FBI's performance since his entire investigation, including up to this moment, is uh, flawed. Why am I doing it, Laura? Can't you figure it out? I'm his defense lawyer. I'm defending him. He's my client. I don't know. Only Donald Trump is not entitled to a defense in America. But well, how no, wait a second. Hold on. Pause it now. Now, wait a second. <laughs> Laura Ingram. <laughs> Laura Ingram has just asked Rudy Giuliani, even if we all accept the idea that there was this deep, dark corruption uh, with Joe Biden, and I think it's the kind of corruption that we see like, oh, China's going to change their policies for, uh, it's probably less than, uh, for Ivanka Trump, or, oh, NBC has hired uh, Abby Huntsman to work on their thing, whatever it is. I mean... Uh, but let's just assume, stipulate there's some corruption there that the U.S. government needs to investigate. Why is Donald Trump's private lawyer the guy they picked to do it? And Rudy Giuliani's answer is, I'm Donald Trump's defense lawyer. Oh, so I don't have a right to defend. By the way, I stood up the bullies like... But sodomized African I, immigrants that tried to besmirch my NYPD. make this clear how... Much of a non sequitur this is. You're being deputized for some reason to pursue a corruption case that presumably has nothing whatsoever to do with the one client you seem to have, Donald Trump. Like, they're sending him to pursue the investigation about Joe Biden, and he says the reason why I'm doing it is because I'm Donald Trump's defense attorney. Well, we all know how bad the FBI was. Do you realize that he is just literally just admitting, well, the reason why they sent me to do it is because it's going to benefit my client. Like, he's literally just admitted that the investigation, he's in charge of the investigation because it's going to benefit his client. Well, look, I'm just... he's solely in charge of it. And he seems to be the only guy who has all operational control because the FBI has dropped the ball on this. I am the fall man. Well, let me take the corn cob pipe out of my mouth because I'm a simple <laughs> fucking country lawyer. But in Latin, it says the de attorneys is also political consultus. So it's the same thing. Let's political to, consultant in Ukraine. I mean, this is sort of stunning. That they oh, let so this Donald guy Trump, he should just be put in front of a firing squad. He don't deserve no defense. Go. Well, only Donald Trump is not entitled to a defense in America. But well, how are you defending him by investigating Biden? How, because, just, because, just one of, for us. because one of the things that the prosecutor that Biden had fired and then the prosecutor that Biden helped to put in, one of the things they did was to dismiss, dismiss a case against an organization that was collecting false information about Donald Trump, about Paul Manafort and feeding it to the Democratic National Committee. Okay, that explains that it to That organization people. was run by... I don't think by, people understood that. That was run by George <laughs> Soros, who then hired the crooked <laughs> FBI agent who is now working for George Soros. Laura, this stinks. 
This is Tommy Hall. This still does not explain any of the reason why D- D- Rudy Giuliani, even if I was to believe this fantastical notion about CrowdStrike and the server in uh, Ukraine, and they've kept it there, and uh, they uh, looked for stuff from, uh, w- w- you know, w- w- the, the Steele dossier, and it, it still does not explain why someone's defense attorney would be the lead investigator Commissioned by the U.S. government to do this. By the way, exactly. The Steele dossier. You said it yourself. Go ahead. You ever see Michael Clayton? Unbelievable. You ever see the George Clooney vehicle, Michael Clayton?